Welcome to the Straight Cutting Experience, where we get exclusive stories from growers from across Western Canada about straight cutting canola. Straight cutting really seems to be taking over the prairies. Everybody's interested in it, and a lot of farmers are having some real success with it. But what growers really want to know is, will it work for me if I haven't tried it or if I've sort of dabbled in it, and how do I make sure I have success? Now, I want to mention, if you've been wondering about straight cutting, join our discussion with Western Canadian farmers who are sharing their own personal tips and experiences here on the Straight Cutting Experience. Today, we're speaking with Mark and Matt Ferguson of Three Hills, Alberta. Boys, how are we doing today? Really good. Good. How are you? Doing fabulous. Okay. So, guys, tell us a little bit about where you farm. Matt, maybe give us a bit of an explanation. Where do you guys farm and what crops? Uh, Our farm's located... uh east of three hills uh our land is kind of from the elnor area down to carbon and uh we're a dry land farm and we grow wheat hard red spring wheat salt barley canola and peas hey mark can you tell us how long you've been straight cutting canola uh about three years we started out uh helping a neighbor out and straight cut on some of his and saw that it worked pretty good so then the next year we tried a little bit ourselves and then last year we did a fair bit Okay, so that first year, were you were you pretty nervous about it, Mark, or was it uh, just sort of you saw the experience of the neighbor and thought, hey, we better just give this a try? Or did you, did you think? I guess first of all, did you think the neighbor was crazy when you saw him doing it? We were a little nervous to try it, just like anything. But uh, and we were, weren't sure. So the first year, we tried a pod shatter resistant variety only, and just one quarter section. And then uh, last year, we did a bit of both of uh, the pod shatter app, just standard hybrid yeah so matt did the neighbor i guess did you ask the neighbor for some tips and tricks or did you uh who else did you reach out to oh uh, uh, we just kind of asked uh neighbors and friends uh and i quizzed our local canola rep uh you know pretty seriously about it and the yield effects and changes you know and what to expect with it um but we kind of yeah, we kind of just winged it and uh, tried it out and had really positive experiences with it so far. Okay, so so Matt, what have you liked most about it so far? Uh, well, we don't have to sloth it, number one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's really nice. A lot of times, you know, we get our crop in fairly quick here, and which generally means it ripens pretty quick on the other end. And, and this way we're able to swath our crops you know, as we need, and anything that kind of gets past the staging, uh, we straight cut it. The yield potential, you know, the seeds are quite a bit larger. Uh, our yield increase has been significant in what we don't swath versus what we straight cut. And uh, it goes through the combine grate, dries out quicker than something in the swath, and, you know, we're able to get on it if it rains sooner than, than the crop we have swath. So a nice fit yeah so is it is it really gaining in popularity in your area are you seeing over the last say three years more guys thinking about it because i another guy i talked to he's been trying to do it for 15 years and there was a lot of trials and tribulations you know you guys are getting into it at a time where it's sort of becoming a little bit more not i wouldn't say mainstream but a little bit more popular so is, is it are acres gaining for straight cutting in your area what do you think mark oh yeah definitely yeah three years ago Nobody was doing it, and now I would say every farmer is doing some straight-cut canola. So, hey, Mark, do you think there's going to be a time where, like, like some people are, like, de- like super, super dedicated to it? Like, it's like, I'm going to do every acre. And some people are like, you know what, it fits on half my acres because of, you know, reason X, Y, Z. W- what about you guys? Or where do you see it fitting kind of as a percentage long-term on their farm? We're, we're looking at a third to a half as kind of a plan. So... It, uh, I mean, it doesn't fit every scenario. It definitely delays harvest on the canola a little bit. Like Matt said, you can get on it quicker after a rain. But as far as just getting it off the field fast, you know, it's, uh, it definitely delays it by a couple of weeks. But typically we have some that's been swathed and ready for a long time before we get to it. So that, that's what we're looking at, leaving to straight cut. Uh, because there's, you know, big wind events or are kind of our biggest risk once it's swapped and uh, it definitely handles it a lot better standing. 
Well, it really kind of becomes a bit of a like a real harvest management strategy. It's not just about that crop that you're gonna that field you're gonna straight cut it, but it really allows you to create create a harvest management plan across across all the acres. So, I guess another thing is is do you guys herbicide pre harvest or how do you manage how do you manage that getting to that harvest point? Is there a pre harvest application? Yeah, yeah, we use uh, Roundup and Heat. We primarily grow in bigger canola, so we use Roundup and Heat. Uh, pre-harvest. Right now, you guys are you guys are uh, scratching earth and driving around and uh, getting some crop in the ground. Have you guys already decided which fields you're going to straight cut already, even while you're sitting on the on the cedar, Matt? Some of them, you know, we've got a pretty good idea. We we actually are growing a half section of uh, of a new pod shatter variety that we haven't grown before, uh, just to see how it compares to the non-pod shatter stuff that we're all happy with. Those ones, of course, will anticipate to to straight cut. As far as the other, the like the normal varieties, uh, no, we'll play that one by year, and as harvest comes along, we'll see which crops, uh, which ones we think are straight cut candidates, and which ones we want to swath. And, and that's the beauty of it. We're not pigeonholed into it right off the start. We can we can make that. Decision at harvest time when we know how it's going to fit best with our harvest plan. It really adds that extra element of flexibility in the in the harvest plan. So you guys mentioned you use Roundup and Heat. Is there, Do you have any suggestions for some of the listeners who are, who are out there in terms of uh, if they have if they haven't used a desiccant, what are some some tips for them to sort of adhere to that where you've had success, uh, Mark? We, we typically spray it kind of similar to the time we would have swapped it. And, or about five days after we would have lost it, I guess. But that's just what's been working good for us. I don't, I, I'm not experienced enough in it to <laughs> be giving out too many tips. But we use the aerial application just because we don't like tracking yeah. down that ripe crop very much with our, with our wheeled sprayer. So I, I would recommend that. Um, coverage seems to be pretty good with the planes, so... Yeah, that makes a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Keeping those tracks out of the field. What about what about headers? What are you guys doing for for combine header, Matt? Uh, well, we uh, we run two flex drapers uh, right now, or three, I guess, and uh, we run one rigid header last year with them, and we'll be running all flex drapers this year. Uh, it's just it's uh, it's a breeze. If you got the right header uh, to go through with a cross auger up top, it, um, it it feeds like a dream. It feeds the combine smooth. There's no slugs, no piles. Like it, when you're harvesting it, it's an even feed across the combine. And and you know we always find when we're picking up swaths that every time the swather leaves the pile, or even if it's just you know kind of bunching through and not leaving a perfect windrow you're continually hammering your your thresher with different piles so mm. we uh we're kind of sold on the flex draper head idea we can shape the ground if we want and uh and it's working great well everybody anybody that's out there that's driven a combine and you're picking up any sort of swath and the the swath isn't nicely laid out. There's a lot of curse words a lot of times for the swather operator. Uh, we we we've all been there. Uh, what about harvest speed? Do you find that you're able to harvest? Like, in, is it an increased speed, less speed uh, when you straight cut? What what do you find there, Mark? Uh, we find it's a pretty similar speed in really dry conditions. It doesn't overthresh with the straight cut, so you could actually gain a little speed if it was really dry, but. Uh, Typically, um, we, we end up going the same speed. It's just that instead of being limited by the shoe, we're limited by engine power now. So it, yeah. it, uh, it does use a little more power. But as far as speed goes, I would say a travel speed is the same, but you're not stopped picking apart wads ever. So that's probably an increase there. Okay, cool. Okay, before I let you guys go, I'm going to ask you one last question. we got a lot of people listening that maybe are considering straight cutting canola but just haven't necessarily got over that threshold yet. What's a piece of advice you have for them to get started? Mark, let's start with you. I would try it. You know, it, it's kind of scary to, to try it sometimes because once you leave it a few days past when you can swath it, there's really no turning back. But I, I wouldn't have any doubts about anybody who's wanting to try it. I think they'll be pleasantly surprised. But 
you you have to have uh, a header with a cross auger, or else you can get into some pretty difficult conditions. Yeah, Matt. Any words? Final words of advice for the audience? Uh, I think that the the post harvest uh, or pre harvest application of of the heat and and some sort of life is is really critical. I've talked to guys who who haven't done it, and uh, and the stalks just tend to stay green for a really long time, and and harvestability is, is really tough at that point. It's really hard on choppers and takes a ton of power. And uh, that sure wasn't our experience with uh, with desiccating it. So I would say that that uh, is uh, something that I think is a must on anything you're planning on straight cutting. Well, guys, hey, good luck with the rest of your seating. Thanks a lot for, t- you know, this is pretty awesome. You guys took the time to uh, chat with me here while you're trying to get the crop in the ground. So I really, really appreciate it. And good luck with the rest of the seating. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks nice talking to you. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us, Matt and Mark. It was great to hear your experience. And by the way, your experience perspectives are what growers really need to encourage them to try straight cutting for the first time. It's really all about becoming familiar with what works in everybody's operation and apply those best practices to your own farm to increase the probability that you'll have success with straight cutting canola. I want to remind everybody, make sure you visit agsolutions.ca slash straightcutpod for more information. And make sure you follow BSF on Twitter at BSF Ag Solutions. I'm Sean Haney with Real Agriculture, and thanks for joining us for this episode of The Straight Cutting Experience.